What's up, guys? We are back with a full slate of MLB action here on Friday, September 27th. Thursday went a little bit up and down. It was a really, really weird day, guys, in the MLB streets. We had the Royals at minus 166. That was an easy 7-4 win there. The Kansas City Bats came alive again, uh, as predicted they would eventually do, so that was nice, but we took the loss on the Rangers at minus 110. Kind of thought the emotions would be too much there for, you know, the Oakland A's players in the last game there at the Coliseum, but yeah, also Kumar Rocker did not look good in that game, so we were off a little bit on that one, but on the premium side, our premium guy nailed it on the MLB plays. Kansas City was a win for him as well. He had the Tigers yesterday, and he had the under in that Texas-Oakland game. So very, very solid 3-0 stuff there for our premium members at Stump the Spread, guys. So yeah, diving in here, we've got a great video for you today with a full 15 games to break down with some red-hot playoff races going down to the absolute wire here. So if you want to win all of your bets today, hit that like button. It's good luck and show support for the channel and all the work we're putting in here every single day. Subscribe so you don't miss out on our daily content. You can now also sign up for a channel membership by clicking the little join button right below the video. Members get exclusive early access to all NFL and college football videos and get their names up on screen just like right now. I really appreciate the support from all of you. Seeing that badge next to your comments absolutely warms my heart. Our videos are sponsored by StumpTheSpread.com. We have a team of experienced cappers over there for every major sport, currently covering Major League Baseball, NCAA football, UFC, and the NFL with NHL games coming up very soon and NBA right around the corner. This is one of the best times of the year to be in the mix with so many sports going on. Click the link in the description if you're interested in signing up and also to join our free email list to get the occasional free or premium pick straight to your inbox and to track our new $100 to $10,000 challenge, which is going on right now. Comment below with any bets you're looking at today and we will give you our best advice on all of them. We are committed to responding to every single comment every single day. Not something you see done in a lot of other places, guys. So let us know anything you want to say about my picks, these videos, or anything you see here. As always, our favorite picks will be in the pinned comment down below. Now let's get into our first game of the day. We've got the Cincinnati Reds going on the road to take on the Chicago Cubs. This Reds-Cubs game is slated to be our only day game of the day here on Friday, and the Cubs and Reds are both eliminated from playoff contention. Cincinnati's lost their last three games to fall to 76 and 83 on the year. We don't have a confirmed starter for the Reds in this game either, which if that means we're going to see a bullpen start from Cincinnati, this bullpen has not been very good down the stretch, which kind of a departure from what we were seeing from them at other points this season. They were looking pretty decent, but right now a 4.11 bullpen ERA. Down the stretch here, guys, things have just kind of fallen apart for that bullpen. So we'll see who we end up with on the mound for the Reds. Obviously going to want to stay tuned to that pinned comment to see if this one ends up in there. But for the Reds offense, they haven't been having a great time recently. Two, one, and zero runs over their last few games. So yeah, not great stuff. Really, really kind of struggling here down the stretch. I mean, we have seen Ellie De La Cruz have a pretty good season. 25 home runs. The dude can steal braces. Uh, an exciting future for him. But right now, 26th in the majors in batting average, 20th in on base percentage. This is not a good offensive team. So we'll see what they can do going up against the Cubs. Another team, obviously obviously eliminated from playoff contention. The Cubs looking like they're going to finish this game this season above 500. They're giving the ball to Jamison Tyone in this game. He's a guy who had some very high highs and some pretty low lows this season. He's 11-8 and eight overall with a 3.41 ERA, and he's been very good down the stretch over his last four starts, guys, including starts against the Yan uh, start against the Yankees. He hasn't given up more than two earned runs in any of those games, so very, very good stuff. We've seen the Cubs only go 2-2 two and two in those games, so that's a pretty big indication there of the lack of run support that he's getting, and yeah, just, yeah, real real bad here. Uh, the Cubs bullpen has been decent down the stretch. A 3.82 bullpen ERA is fine. Kind of around where they've been all season long. Like the bullpen for Chicago hasn't been amazing, but also hasn't been terrible. The offense has kind of been the Achilles heel of this team. They've turned it on a few different points in this season, but uh, it's just it's just been tough, guys. I mean, they've scored 6, 10, and 2 runs over their last few games. That was a series at the Phillies, so pretty solid stuff there. And they're 10th in the majors in run scored this season, but 15th in batting average. And yeah, just not quite quite a good enough offense. Like it seemed like when the offense would do well, the pitching staff would have problems and vice versa. And this team never really felt like they could get on the right track. So looking at the numbers for this game, we've got the Reds at plus 128, the Cubs at minus 148. We've got an over under of six and a half in this game. The Reds are 37 and 41 on the road. The Cubs are a pretty solid 42 and 36 when playing at Wrigley Field. No trends for Cincinnati. They're a 500 over under team on the road. The Cubs are 43, 34 and one to the under at home. We've got an over under of all the way down to six and a half in this game guys. So obviously Tyone being on the mound, that makes a little bit of sense, but who are we going to see from the Reds? And do we have some crazy wind blowing in or something? That's the only way this number being this low makes sense to me, but I don't trust it enough to take the over or anything like that. If you're uh, begging me for an over under play on this game, I am leaning slightly towards the over. That's a very
very small number, but late in the year, the offenses kind of tend to tail off. And if you're begging me for a side in this game, since it's going to be such a low scoring competition, it does make me want to take a look at the Reds, but I think the Cubs probably find a way to win at this game. Next up, guys, we have the Chicago White Sox going on the road to take on the Detroit Tigers. The White Sox come to this game. Shockingly, they just swept the Angels. Crazy stuff there. They seem very, very determined to avoid that loss number 121. So we'll see if they can hold out any longer. Uh, they're going to be even the ball to Garrett Crochet. And earlier this season, that would have looked like a guarantee that they were going to get a win. But recently, that has not been the case. He's 6-12 and this year with a 3.68 ERA. His last couple of starts have been good. But when you can only go four innings into a game and you're not getting, you know, you're not just a not allowed to go out there and pitch longer than that. There's only so much you can do. So we'll see what he can do out there. I'm expecting him to be good, but if he's good, it's only going to be if you're for a few innings there, and that can be a bit tough. Got to be a little bit weird, a little bit hard on the old psyche, especially for a young guy. So we'll see how he does out there going up against the Tigers. We'll also see what we get from this White Sox bullpen. That's been the reason they can lose all these games, guys. They are way down there in the bottom. A 4.77 bullpen ERA has them second worst in the majors, and we don't need to do a super deep dive on this offense. They've been the worst offensive team in the majors all season long. They are coming off of a decent series. They just scored seven runs, winning seven to nothing against the Angels there in game three, but seven four and three runs in a series not all that special so yeah not feeling too great still about an offense that's last in run scored last in batting average last in on base percentage and last there in slugging percentage so we'll see what they can do going up against the tigers who are just killing it right now they've won their last five in a row nine out of their last ten they are currently sitting up there tied with the kansas city royals for that last spot in the american league wild card race so very very dramatic stuff coming down to the wire there so kind of intriguing here we don't have a confirmed starter right now for the Tiger, so we don't know who's going to end up out there on the mound to begin this game but we're not that worried about it, guys. I know that sounds weird to say, but we're really not super concerned. Over the course of the season, this has been a very good pitching staff. They're third in the MLB in team earned run average, second in whip. They are sixth in the majors, allowing an opponent batting average of only 234. So really, whoever they run out there is going to be fine. And if it ends up being a bullpen start, guys, the Tigers have been fantastic coming out of the pen here down the stretch. A 3.56 bullpen ERA coming out of the bullpen that has them in fourth place in the majors right now so expecting very very good stuff from this pitching staff what are we going to get from them offensively well guys it hasn't been that bad down the stretch for a team that struggled at the plate generally speaking this season they've scored four seven two four and six runs over their last few games all very reasonable stuff there and they're going to get to take at least four innings of at bats against uh maybe five probably more likely five innings of at bats against that terrible terrible chicago white Sox bullpen so i think this is going to be a pretty reasonable spot here for the tigers to find a way to get this win guys looking at the numbers we've got the white Sox at plus 138 the tigers at minus 162 we've got an over under of seven and a half in this game the White Sox are the worst road team in the MLB, only 16 and 62 on the road. The Tigers are actually solid at home, 42 and 36 at home. We've got both teams here showing some trends towards the under, and I don't think under seven and a half is a terrible play in this game. I think it's pretty reasonable, to be honest. Although, that being said, I do think we want to be on the Tigers here at minus 162. I, that's my favorite play of the game. I know the price is a little bit steep. I'm not quite brave enough to take it minus one and a half. I would just say go ahead and put a couple extra units on this one to get you know the payout to what you want it to be because I think the Tigers, regardless of who they end up putting out on the mound for this game, this team in desperation mode, they are going to find a win here against the White Sox. Next up, guys, we're looking at the Philadelphia Phillies going on the road to take on the Washington Nationals. The Phillies come into this game fresh off of winning two out of three there against the Cubs. They're 94 and 65 on the year. They're tied with the Dodgers there in that race to see who can come away with the best record in the National League. They're going to be giving the ball to Ranger Suarez in this game. He's 12 and 7 on the year with a 3.15 ERA, and he looked a little bit better his last time out. A good start against the Mets. He went five innings, gave up five hits, and two earned runs. He did give up two home runs in that game, and yeah, guys, it seems like gone are the early part of the early days of this season where Suarez was looking absolutely unhittable down the stretch here it's definitely been problematic we'll see how he looks once the playoffs roll around but right now cannot be a guy that's super high on the Phillies list of starters they want to be putting out there on the mound in a playoff game so we'll see what he can do here obviously he's going up against a team that doesn't have anything left to play for so that could probably help a little bit he's had some he's missed some time this season he did have a decent start against the Nationals early in the year but this is not the same guy that we were seeing earlier in the year so we'll see what we get from Suarez in this game we'll see what we get from that Phillies 
bullpen has been much, much better down the stretch, guys. A 3.92 bullpen ERA, much better than what was looking like a bullpen that could possibly sink this team uh, in the regular season. Things were getting very, very dark out there for the bullpen for the Phillies, but that seems like a problem of the past, and the bats have come back alive, guys. Nine, four, and six runs over their last few games. This should be one of the best offensive teams in the majors this season. Fourth in run scored, fourth in batting average. They're getting on base at a 326 clip, and they are the fifth highest slugging percentage team in the majors. So this is a team that can absolutely mash it up there, and they're going up against pretty much the opposite of that. They're taking on the Nationals, who just got swept in a three-game series by the Royals. They're 69-90 and 90 on the year. Giving the ball in this one to Trevor Williams, who's 5-1 and one this season with a 2.19 ERA. He missed a lot of time to injury, guys. He started on the last day of May. And then it had uh, his last start, guys, was back on the 20th of this month. So, yeah, he was very good out there against the Cubs uh, at Wrigley Field. Five innings, three hits, one earned run allowed. He struck out seven, walked zero, but that was a game that Washington managed to lose three to one. So we'll see what he can do here against the Phillies, a team he struggled against back in May. So that's something to at least slightly take into consideration. But to me, it feels like this is more of a like, let's get this guy a couple, you know, starts under his belt, get him some confidence built up, keep him healthy, get him into the offseason where he can, you know, finish rehabbing and get, you know, at full 100% shape for next season. So we'll see how that goes. We'll also see how things look for this Washington bullpen. A 4.17 bullpen ERA has them way down in the bottom third of the majors. Not a very good bullpen out there, guys. Definitely reason for concern since I don't think we're going to see uh, Trevor Williams pitch super deep into this game. And the offense has been bad. 4 0, zero and 0 runs over the last few games. This team really, really, you know, just cannot wait for this season to be over. The Nationals making some weird, weird decisions like, you know, sending down C.J. Abrams for being out late at a casino or something. Like, I don't understand. Like, why do you care? Your season's over. Sorry you didn't put up together a decent team. They are 25th in run scored, 26th in slugging percentage. This is not a team that I'm interested in backing. So looking at the numbers for this game, we've got the Phillies at minus 178, the Nationals at plus 160. We've got over-unders out there of 8 or 8.5. The Phillies are 39-38 and 38 on the road. Washington is 36-42 and 42 at home. We've got mixed trends here towards the over-under. Uh, the Phillies are an over-team on the road. The Nationals are an under-team at home. Honestly, guys, this isn't a game where I see a ton of value. I guess I side slightly towards the Phillies at minus 178 playing on the road since they've still got a little something to play for, but the Nationals are putting Trevor Williams on the mound, and he could do decent, but he's got some bad history against the Phillies this season, so go ahead and give me the Phillies in this one, and if you're begging me for an over-under play, I think I go with the over here since I expect the Phillies to probably score seven or eight runs of their own, and if the Nationals can chip in a run or two, then you easily get over that number, but this game not going anywhere near the pinned comment. Hey guys, jumping in here with a quick ad break. First of all, this is a great time to sign up at StumpTheSpread.com. Signing up for a premium membership gets you access to our entire team of cappers covering MLB, NCAA football, UFC, and the NFL. If you just want to test out the service, a great way to do that is by joining our free email list, which will get you the occasional free or premium pick straight to your inbox. Just go ahead and click that link in the description. It'll take you right over to StumpTheSpread.com. Also, guys, just to clarify some of the questions we've been getting in the emails and in the comments, I am not the MLB capper for StumpTheSpread.com. These YouTube picks are obviously free to everyone and are just what I am seeing out there. We have an expert with nearly 15 years of experience that covers MLB and has a very strong algorithm and some very cool tools that he uses to bring our premium members the best picks possible. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you're new. Now back to the game. Next up, guys, we're looking at the Pittsburgh Pirates going on the road to take on the New York Yankees. The Pirates come into this game not having a great time here at the end of the season. They've been eliminated from playoff contention for quite some time. They're giving the ball to Jared Jones, who is 6-8 this year with a 4.14 ERA. His last start, he got absolutely shelled by the Cincinnati Reds, breaking a little streak of him putting up pretty decent starts. I said he had three good starts in a row and then, you know, a real bad one there against Cincinnati. So we'll see how he looks out there going up against the Yankees. Yeah, guys, not the easiest situation to be in, and it's not like he's got a great bullpen behind him either. The Pittsburgh Pirates bullpen has been one of the worst in the majors, a 4.55 bullpen ERA pretty much laughably bad, and the offense hasn't been much better. We've seen Brian Reynolds absolutely fall off a cliff here since the All-Star break, so that's not a great look, and they've scored two, 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 and one run over their last few games. Not great at the plate, 28th in slugging percentage, 27th in on-base percentage. So going up against the Yankees, kind of a tough look here. The Yankees look like they're probably going to finish that game off against Baltimore and get the win. They're up 7-0 in the end of the sixth inning. They are still battling it out with Cleveland there to see who's going 
going to finish things up with the uh, best record there in the AL East. They're giving the ball to Carlos Rodon, who's 16-9 and this year with a 3.98 ERA. He's looking much, much better here at the end of the season. His last start, he gave up no runs on five hits over six innings in a 10 to nothing shutout against the Oakland A's. Yeah, four great starts in a row, not allowing more than two earned runs in any of them. And he even had an 11 strikeout performance there at the Rangers. I know it's the Rangers guys, but still very, very good stuff. And it's not like he's taking on the toughest opponent in this game. So expecting good stuff in this one from Radon in terms of their bullpen. I'm expecting good stuff from the Yankees as well. They're currently sixth in the majors with a 3.62 bullpen ERA. So seems like that bullpen kind of figuring things out again uh we'll see you know how they finish off this game against baltimore but right now expecting good things from the bullpen and i'm always going to be expecting good stuff from this offense they're now up seven to nothing yeah they scored seven seven three seven ten and four runs over the last few games judge doing his thing here at the end of the year the dude's probably trying pretty hard to get up to 60 home runs that would be pretty nuts but they're third in the majors and runs scored this season third in on base percentage they're eighth in batting average and fourth in slugging percentage like this is a crazy crazy good offensive team absolutely no doubt about it so looking at the numbers for this game guys we've got the pirates at plus 160 the yankees at minus 190 we've got an over under out there of eight and a half the pirates not a great road team 35 and 43 on the road the yankees honestly not as dominant at home as you would expect 42 and 35 when playing at yankee stadium we've got mixed trends here towards the over under the yankees over team at home no major shock there and the pirates an under team on the road so not a lot to go off there on the over under i would tend to look a little bit towards the over i guess i don't know i don't really like the over under but guys, I do like the Yankees in this spot, and I think there's a decent chance they could win this game comfortably. So we want to look at them minus one and a half. If you take a minus one and a half, you can get them at plus 102. I like that one a lot, guys. That seems extremely reasonable. Definitely worth it to take them minus one and a half here against the Pirates team that seems like they've kind of given up on the season and really can't hit the ball right now. And this is a great, uh, great opportunity for Judge and the other Yankees hitters to beef up their numbers and get their timing right, getting very close to the postseason. Next up, guys, we're looking at the Miami Marlins going on the road to take on the Toronto Blue Jays. These two teams, well, the Marlins are playing right now, guys. They are up four to nothing in the bottom of the sixth inning against the Minnesota Twins. So really seem to be enjoying playing spoiler here. That would be a devastating loss for the Twins. The Marlins are going to be giving the ball in this game to Adam Aller, who's 1-4 this year with a 5.06 ERA. His last couple of starts, he's looked much better. He struggled there right off the bat, but yeah, a good start against Atlanta, albeit giving up eight hits, so maybe not elite, and a decent start against Washington. But yeah, we'll see what we get from him in this game. Obviously, he's going to be going up against a bit tougher of an opponent, I would say, than you know, like Washington or Pittsburgh. So yeah, going up against a team like Toronto, even though they're eliminated, could be a bit tough. The Marlins bullpen has been horrible here at the end of the season no major news there but they're looking good in their current game so we'll see how that finishes up but yeah the offense hasn't been amazing either 28th and run scored 29th and on base percentage it seems like this is a team that kind of enjoys playing spoiler but yeah i don't know if they're quite good enough to really significantly play spoiler so yeah definitely worried about the marlins in this one as they head to toronto to take on the blue jays who come into this game fresh off of a six to one win there over boston uh yeah toronto's been a team that's been eliminated for quite some time so haven't had a lot to play for down the stretch they're giving the ball to jose Bear who is 16 and 10 this year with a 3.38 ERA. He's had a pretty good year, and his last five starts have been lights out, guys. His last start was against Tampa Bay. He only gave up a single run, and we saw the Blue Jays lose that game one to nothing. So that's got to be a devastating feeling. But over his last five starts, guys, he hasn't given up more than two earned runs. He's gone at least six innings in each one of those games, and he's faced some decent teams in there. I mean, Boston, Minnesota, Atlanta, like those are some decent opponents, and he's done really well, done a really good job of keeping Toronto in these games, which kind of impressive, and you need good starting pitching to take the pressure off of this terrible bullpen, a 4 0.73 bullpen ERA this season from Toronto absolutely terrible stuff the offense hasn't been great down the stretch they're coming up a game they scored six runs so they'll definitely take that but six five one three and two runs over their last few not exactly filling me with optimism they're 20th in the majors and run scored but 13th and on base percentage and 16th in batting average so they've definitely got some guys out there still that are trying but seems a bit rough right now and looking at the numbers for this game we got the marlins at plus 150 the blue jays at minus 174 we've got an over under of eight and a half the marlins are 28 and 49 on the road toronto is 39 and 39 at home we've got mixed trends here towards the over under miami is a massive under team on the road and toronto is a uh, significant over team at home so 
Yeah, that one's kind of tough to pick. I do think I lean towards the under 8.5 with Berrios and Aller out there on the mound. Aller's been throwing the ball a bit better, and I'm expecting very good stuff from Berrios. So I think you might be best served to just go ahead and take Toronto here at minus 174 or take a minus 1.5. I don't know if I trust either one of these teams enough to put this one in the pinned comment, but I definitely think this is a good spot for the Blue Jays to come away with a win. Next on the docket, guys, we're looking at the Houston Astros going on the road to take on the Cleveland Guardians. The Astros come into this game. They've officially clinched things up in the AL West. An impressive comeback from a team that was terrible in the early goings. They did just lose two out of three against Seattle, but at 86 and 73 on the year, they got the job done. They're going to be giving the ball to Ron L. Blanco in this game, who's 12 and 6 this year with a 2.88 ERA. It'll be interesting to see how long they leave him out there. He's been looking very good. His last four starts have all been extremely solid. Two wins against the Angels, uh, you know, in dominant performances, but it was the Angels, but a great but very st- short outing there against Arizona and a very good start against the Kansas. City Royals. So definitely got to give some credit here to Blanco. Uh, Some credit also to this Astros bullpen that's been elite down the stretch. Currently seventh in the majors right now with a 3.67 bullpen ERA. So Good stuff there. The offense has been kind of the hiccup for this team all year long. They've been putting up pretty good numbers, but it's been a little rough, and we've seen some guys missing some time here down the stretch. Uh, Alvarez has been out with that calf complaint, and he's currently listed as day-to-day, so I don't really know why they would mess with this. Yeah, it's confirmed he's going to be out for this series against Cleveland. No reason to be playing him here. This team's already clinched up everything that they can, and they are not going to be, you know, there's no benefit for them to win these games. So they're going to be resting, guys. They're going to be trying to get everybody healthy and ready to go here. So I'm also be very, very interested to see who they're choosing to give work to out of the bullpen and how long they want to leave Blanco out there on the mound. So we'll see what they do here going up against the Guardians, a team that still has something to play for. They are battling it out with the Yankees to see who can end with the best record in the American League. They just won their last two games. They're both against Cincinnati, so good stuff there. And at 92 and 67, obviously they've had a great season. They're giving the ball in this game to Joey Cantillo, who's 2-3 and three this year with a 4.63 ERA. His last few starts have been very, very good, or his last few outings. His last four outings have been elite. Three of them have been starts. He obliterated the White Sox, was very, very good against Tampa Bay, and then had a decent, maybe not quite elite, because he only went four and a third innings, but a good start against the Twins. So we'll see what he can do here against a very demotivated Astros team. I'm expecting very good stuff from this 23-year-old from Honolulu. I think he is going to uh, figure it out. I think he's going to do some good stuff out there on the mound in what is not a meaningful game for his opponent, but a very meaningful game for Cleveland. And once he comes out of the game, their bullpen is elite, a 2.59 bullpen ERA obviously insane, the best in the majors this season, and the offense seems like it's figuring stuff out over the last couple games, scoring five and six runs respectively, so that's been nice for a team that's been pretty middle of the road offensively, uh, leaning pretty pretty heavily on Jose Ramirez this season. They're 14th in runs scored, 15th in slugging percentage, but 20th in team batting average. So, looking at the numbers for this game, guys, we got the Astros at plus 105, the Guardians at minus 115. We got over-unders out there of eight or seven and a half. Houston, 38 and 38 on the road, so not a team that's seems super motivated on the road. Cleveland 50 and 28 at home, so a very good home team. Cleveland's a slight over team. Houston's a huge under team. Honestly, guys, if you wanted to look at under eight in this game, that would make some sense to me, but I think the Guardians at minus 115 are in a very good spot here. I don't think we're going to see Houston take this game very seriously at all, and Cleveland could use this win for sure, so give me the Guardians in this one. Next on the docket, we're looking at the Tampa Bay Rays going on the road to take on the Boston Red Sox. The Rays come into this game. They've lost three in a row. They've been eliminated from playoff contention. Got to be pretty depressing. They're giving the ball to Taj Bradley in this game, who's 7-11 and on the year with a 4.30 ERA. His last couple of starts, he has seemed to be figuring things out after a really prolonged rough stretch there. A good start against Toronto and a 3-2 win there for the Rays, and then a 4 and a third inning start against Cleveland that wasn't quite as sharp. So we'll see what we get from him in this one going up against the Reds. Sox. Uh, the Tampa Bay Rays bullpen has not been great all season long. Definitely can't say that, but they've been much better here down the stretch. A 3.76 bullpen ERA. Definitely not terrible. The offense, though, this offense has been horrendous. 3 1 1, 4 3 and 1 runs over their last few games. Pretty embarrassing stuff. They are second to last in the majors in runs scored. They are 29th in the majors in slugging percentage. Just not a lot of positive things to say for this team at the plate. They have just not been a very good hitting team all year, and I don't see that changing here at the end of the season. So we'll see what they can do going up against the Red Sox, who are also eliminated. They're probably trying to finish this season above 500, I guess, but really all they have left to play for right now is pride, which has to be a pretty big blow 
low to Red Sox fans. There were some pretty high highs for this team at some points of the season, but the bats fell asleep down the stretch. They're giving the ball to Nick Pavetta, who's 6-11 this year. Speaking of him, not very good starting pitching this season for the Red Sox. 6-11, a 4.21 ERA. His last start was good against the Twins, and he's had some good outings over his last few. What will he do against the very weak hitting Tampa Bay Rays? Well, the last time he faced them was back on the 17th, so just a few days ago, and went 4-2 and their innings, gave up 5 hits and 4 earned runs in an 8-3 to loss there for Boston. So, not expecting miracles from Pavetta against a team that he has bad history against, and not expecting miracles from this Boston bullpen that is 6th worst in the majors, a 4.46 bullpen ERA. Real bad there. The thing that was carrying this team at different points this season was this offense. And over the course of the season, they put up some pretty good numbers. And recently, they've been okay. I mean, one, six, four, nine, and eight runs over the last few games is much better than they were doing there for a bit. They're ninth in the majors this season in runs scored, sixth in batting average. So, yeah, there's some hitters out there. How will they do in this one going up against Taj Bradley? I think they've got a chance to have a decent day. And looking at the numbers for this game, guys, we got the Rays at plus 115, the Red Sox at minus 130. We've got an over-under of eight out there. Tampa Bay is 36 and 42 on the road. Boston is 37 and 41 at home. We've got both teams showing trends towards the under in this spot. Boston's trends are so small, we don't really care. Tampa Bay, 45, 31, and two to the under on the road. But guys, I think this game is actually an over spot. I think uh, Tampa Bay is going to have a decent time hitting the ball against Pavel. I think the Red Sox are going to have a decent time here against Taj Bradley. Not somebody that's really been dominant for quite some time. And he faced Boston twice earlier in the season back in May and didn't exactly have a great time. So yeah, I think over eight is a very, very reasonable play on this game. There are no seven and a halfs out there still. So definitely gonna have to settle for that eight. But yeah, I think the, uh, I think the over in this one makes the most sense to me. Next up, guys, we've got a very crazy game between the Kansas City Royals and the Atlanta Braves. The Royals come into this game tied for that last wild card spot in the American League. They just swept the Nationals in a three-game series there, but now have to go to Atlanta. That is a much, much tougher task. They're going to be giving the ball to Brady Singer in this one. He's 9-12 and this season with a 3.73 ERA. His last start, he got shelled by the Giants, so not a great look there. And guys, the Royals are 0-5 over his last five starts. That is rough, rough stuff. This has also not been a team that's really done well this season playing on the road, generally speaking, especially in the early goings. They've turned that around here in the back half of the season, but definitely a concerning spot here for Singer. Not somebody that I have the most trust in, and I still, while they've been a bit better recently, have very little trust in that Royals bullpen, a 4.21 bullpen ERA obviously down there in the bottom third of the league. And the Bats, while they did come alive in their last game against Washington, have only scored 7, 3, 1, 0, 0, and 1 run over their last few games. Can't exactly say that they're on fire here, despite being 7th in the majors in batting average this season. So definitely a bit concerned as they go up against the Atlanta Braves, who've had a really weird time. There were two action-packed games. We were supposed to have a crazy doubleheader today after the game yesterday got postponed, but both of those games are going to have to be made up as they are games against the Mets. So Crazy, crazy stuff here down the stretch for the Atlanta Braves as they try and keep themselves alive in the National League wildcard hunt. They're only one game back right now of the Arizona Diamondbacks and one game back of the New York Mets. So things really, really as hot as they can get out there. It's reported that they're going to be giving the ball in this game to Max Freed. He's 10-10 and 10 this season with a 3.42 ERA. He's coming off of a very good start against the Marlins. Over his last five outings, I would say he's probably had uh, four good starts, but he's definitely left me with a little bit of confusion. Concern, but some of those starts, I mean, like a good start against the Dodgers, six innings, two hits, and three earned runs against the Dodgers, very solid stuff. So we'll see what he can do here against the Royals. Obviously, a team that's, you know, not nearly on the Dodgers level, but uh, better than the Nationals, who gave him some trouble back on 9 11. So we're a little bit worried about that, guys. And the Royals are not a team that he has faced yet this season. So going to be interesting stuff uh, in this one for Max Freed. Also, guys, the bullpen edge in this game for sure goes to Atlanta, a 3.30 bullpen ERA. They've been one of the best two or three bullpens in Major League Baseball all season long. And the offense has come along too. And these guys are going to be super well rested. I don't know if that'll be a good thing or a bad thing. Always hard to tell in baseball whether rest is going to give you rust or if it's just going to, you know, make you feel better physically. They scored five, five, six, three and 15 runs over their last few games. They're 14th in the majors in batting average, 16th in runs scored. This is a team that leans pretty heavily on Ozuna, but he's been hitting the ball really well here down the stretch. So looking at the numbers for this game, we've got the Royals at plus 164, the Braves at minus 180. We've got an over-under of eight in this game. The Royals are up to 40 and 38 on the road this season. Atlanta is 43 and 33 at home. In terms of the over-under here, guys, we are showing significant trends for both teams here towards the under. The Royals are 43, 31 and four to the under on the road. Atlanta is 
50, 25, and 1 to the under at home this season. Guys, I'm not interested in the side in this one. I definitely think under 8 is the play. I'm a little bit worried about Brady Singer out there or the Royals, uh, you know, the Royals bullpen, but I don't expect to see tons of offense in this one. Go ahead and give me under 8. I think this is a very reasonable spot. And keep an eye out in this one for any sort of weird pitching changes. You know, Atlanta definitely would have the power to switch things up if they so chose. Next up, guys, we're looking at the Baltimore Orioles going on the road to take on the Minnesota Twins. The Orioles come into this game, guys. They are getting destroyed by the Yankees right now. They're down 9 to nothing in the end of the seventh inning. They've been playing relatively well here down the stretch. Not that they have a whole lot to play for. They've got their playoff spot out there in the American League wild card locked up. So, yeah, very good stuff from them. They did struggle a little bit down the stretch, uh, but, you know, they've played well enough recently to lock that up. They're giving the ball to young Cade Povich in this game. He's 2-9 and nine this season with a 5.59 ERA. His last start was against the Tigers, and he was good out there. Five innings, two hits, two earned runs in that one. And, yeah, his last couple of starts have been very, very solid against the Tigers. Both of those were in losses, but it wasn't really his fault. He did everything that could have reasonably been expected from him. Going up against the Twins here, maybe not the easiest, but also not the toughest situation. So we'll see how this young guy looks in terms of their bullpen. Uh, Baltimore has been a bit better down the stretch, but a 4.16 bullpen ERA obviously doesn't fill me with confidence. And the offense has obviously disappeared again, getting shut out in their current game. Uh, still fifth in the majors and runs scored, but not a team you could really depend on at the plate here down towards the end of the season. So looking at their opponent in this one, the Twins have to be in absolute desperation mode. They're currently losing in the bottom of the sixth, four to one against the Marlins. So gonna have to check back in the pinned comment how that game ends could have a lot to do with how we predict this one to go. But the Twins are clinging to life out there in the um, American League wildcard hunt. Guys, it's getting really really, really bleak for them. They have to win this game against the Marlins. They cannot let this one get away. They're going to be giving the ball to Pablo Lopez in this game against Baltimore. 15-9 on the season with a 4.11 ERA. He's been their ace this season, kind of, or him or Ober, I guess, and he's been very good recently, although his last start was terrible against Boston, so he's in need of something of a bounce back, and the bullpen for the Twins has been part of the problem for them this season at the end of the year. A 4.07 bullpen ERA is pretty bad, and the offense has been a little bit banged up and very in effective down the stretch as well. They're down to 12th in the majors and runs scored and offense was supposed to be what would carry this team. So looking at the numbers for this one, we've got the Orioles at plus 145, the Twins at minus 172. We've got an over under of eight and a half out there. Baltimore's 44 and 33 on the road. The Twins are 43 and 34 at home. We've got both teams showing trends towards the over here, but I'm not interested in the over. To be honest, I'm not super interested in this game, at least until I see what happens in their current game. If they do happen to win, I do think I like the Twins a decent amount in this one, but that minus 170 72 price tag makes me think this won't be in the pinned comment. Next up, guys, we got the Los Angeles Dodgers going on the road to take on the Colorado Rockies. The Dodgers and the Padres are going to be playing here in a little bit. We're recording this game a little bit early. We don't have a great read on what's going to go on here against Colorado. We'll see if the Dodgers win their current game, but things are getting very, very interesting in their race with, with the Padres there for the top spot in the in their National League West. They're currently, uh, yeah, three games. So basically, the Padres have to win this game. If they lose, then this, you know, kind of all takes care of itself. But the Dodgers are still going to be in a race there with the Phillies for the best record there in the National League. So they should have something to play for in this one. We unfortunately do not have a confirmed starter for the Dodgers in this game. So we'll see who they end up putting out there on the mound. But if it ends up being a bullpen start, we're not too worried about it. The Dodgers have been a very good bullpen over the course of the season. They're currently fifth in the majors with a 3.61 bullpen ERA. The offense maybe hasn't been amazing here against the Padres, but it looked decent against Colorado when they just played them a few days ago, scoring six, three, and six runs respectively. They had that 20 run game against the Marlins. So this is not an offense that I'm really too worried about, especially with Otani, uh, you know, being so, so insane out there right now. So looking at their opponent in this game, the Rockies come into this one with nothing to play for. They did just win their last game of the series against the Cardinals 10 to 8. But at 61 and 98 on the year, been another wasted season for Colorado. They're handing the ball to Cal Quantrill, who's 8 and 10 this season with a 4.72 ERA. His last couple of starts have been okay. His last time against the Dodgers, uh, four and two thirds innings, six hits, three earned runs, and what was eventually a six to three win there for the Rockies. So pretty impressive stuff there, but not exactly what I would call dominant off the top of my head. So we'll see what he can do. We'll see if the bullpen for the Rockies can hold themselves together a little bit. A 5.33 bullpen ERA has been the worst bullpen in the majors all season long and the offense obviously coming off a game where they scored 10 runs in a bit of a letdown spot they have not been a great offense this season it was kind of cool to see charlie blackman hit a home run there but yeah just not i mean 19th in the majors and run scored 23rd on base percentage and you get to play half your games 
at Coors Field, kind of a tough look. So looking at the numbers for this one, we've got the Dodgers as big favorites at minus 184, the Rockies at plus 160. We've got an over-under of 11 and a half in this one. The Dodgers are 42 and 35 on the road. The Rockies are 37 and 39 at home. We've got mixed trends here towards the over-under. Guys, this game could pretty much star in a show called Games I Don't Really Care About. Not too interested in this one. If you're forcing me to bet it, probably go ahead and give me the Dodgers, assuming they, uh, you know, if they lose their current game, we have to, we just have to see more information here. But regardless of the results of the Dodgers and Padres game tonight, I'm not going to be super interested in this game. That price on the Dodgers is going to absolutely skyrocket if they put anyone decent out there on the mound. So yeah, this is pretty much a stay away spot for me. Next up, guys, we got a very intriguing matchup between the New York Mets and the Milwaukee Brewers. The Mets come into this game. They were part of that whole situation. Like, they are the ones that had two games against Atlanta scheduled that got delayed. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, the Brewers come into this game. They've obviously locked stuff up there in the NL Central, and they're pretty much out of the race there to try and get home field advantage. So they, uh, they're they a team with very little to play for. The Mets come into this game uh, handing the ball to Sean Manea, who's 12-5 and with a 3.29 ERA this season. And he's coming off a decent start against the Phillies and most notably, the Mets are 5-0 and the last five times he's been out there on the mound. So I'm expecting pretty good stuff from him. Apparently, Manea has not faced the Brewers yet this season, so that will be a new adventure for him. But going up against a team with no motivation definitely seems like a good spot. And the Mets' bullpen's been getting better down the stretch, a 3.98 bullpen ERA, not the disaster that it was early in the season. So we'll see what they can do up there at the plate. The Mets' offense hasn't been necessarily lighting the world on fire, but they've been okay. 7th in the majors in run scored, 11th in the majors in batting average. They've scored 1, 2, 6, 2, 10, 10, and 10 runs over their last few games. So if they can get back to that team that was scoring double digits three days in a row, I'm sure their fans would be very, very stoked. We'll see what they can do against the Brewers. Like I said, nothing to play for for Milwaukee right now. They're going to be giving the ball to Frankie Montas, who's 7-11 and 11 this season with a 4.85 ERA. His last start, he got absolutely dismantled by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Start for that, he was okay against the Phillies, but not great. So we haven't seen anything great from him over his last five starts, except for one very good start against against the San Francisco Giants. So we'll see what he looks like here going up against the Mets. Uh, definitely not the easiest assignment out there. And the Milwaukee bullpen, though, it's been good down the stretch. Second in the majors, a 3.17 bullpen ERA. Very little to complain about there. So expecting good things from the bullpen, but not really good stuff from Montas. And the offense, they've actually been good. They seem like they're still kind of locked in. 5, 1, 7, and 10 runs over their last few games. They're sixth in the majors and run scored. 10th in batting average. So yeah, we'll see what they come up with here. But guys, in this game. We've got the Mets at minus 115, the Brewers at minus 102. We've got an over-under of seven and a half. The Mets are 40 and 35 on the road. Milwaukee is 45 and 33 at home. Uh, we've got the bull team showing trends towards the over here, but I'm not super interested in that. Although over seven and a half is a bit intriguing. I'm going to be on the Mets at minus 115 in this game. This is an absolute must win for them. I think they come through in this one against a very unmotivated Brewers team. I think the time to bet on the Mets is right now with Sean Manea on the mound. Next on the docket, guys, we are looking at the Texas Rangers going on the road to take on the Los Angeles Angels. Obviously, guys, these are two teams that do not have anything left to play for this season and haven't for quite some time. The interest... The most interesting thing in this game probably is the Texas Rangers handing the ball to Jacob DeGrom in this game. He's uh, going to be making his third start of the year. The first two, he's looked pretty good in limited action. They're both against the Mariners, so, you know, not exactly the toughest opponent out there, but we'll see what he can do. Obviously, I don't expect him to go deep into this game. They really just want to get him through the end of the season healthy so we can have a full offseason to get back to full strength, and this Rangers team can kind of just hit the reset button. Their bullpen has been horrendous this season. The offense has had its moments, but 22nd in the majors and run scored and 22nd in batting average. Average, not what they had in mind. Really, Corey Seager was the lone bright spot of this offense, and he spent a lot of time on the injured list. So we'll see what they can do here going up against an Angels team that just got swept. They got swept, guys, by the Chicago White Sox. We saw Neto have to leave that game there with a shoulder injury. That looked pretty nasty, and yeah, things not looking good for the Angels. They're giving the ball to Reed Detmers in this one. He's 4-8 and eight this season with a 6.67 ERA. He's gotten shelled in his last couple of starts, including giving up seven earned runs over five and a third to the White Sox. Not a good look, man. That is a, that's a real, real bad look. So concerned about that, concerned about their bullpen. Obviously, they've been pretty bad coming out of the pen. A little bit better here at the end of the season, but yeah, not a great bullpen team, and the offense, definitely not good. Zero, three, two, nine, and four runs over their last few games. Not an offense that you can depend on. 27th in the majors and 
runs scored and 28th in batting average. So look at the numbers for this one. We've got the Rangers at minus 165, the Angels at plus 148. We've got an over under of seven and a half. The Rangers 31 and 47 on the road, the Angels 32 and 46 at home. We've got mixed trends here towards the over under, but guys, I think this is a pretty good spot for the Rangers. Minus 165 on a bad team probably isn't going to make it into the pinned comment, but I think we'll see very good stuff from DeGrom. Uh, so, you know, if you wanted to take and maybe, you know, just the Rangers in the first five or something like that, that would make sense as well. But overall, not a game that I'm very interested in betting. Next on the docket, guys, we've got the San Diego Padres going on the road to take on the Arizona Diamondbacks in a very, very interesting, very, very exciting showdown between two teams fighting it out there in the National League wildcard situation. The Padres have obviously already, you know, clinched themselves a playoff berth, but right now they're battling it out with the Dodgers. So if they lose this game, uh, you know, on Thursday night against the Dodgers on Friday, maybe they won't be that motivated going up against the Diamondbacks, but we'll have to see. The, Do the Padres come into this game. They're giving the ball to Martin Perez, who's 5-5 five and five this season with a 4.25 ER. Ray. His last start was very good against the White Sox, but it was the White Sox. We're not going to freak out about that. However, his last three starts, starts against the White Sox, Giants, and Tigers were all very, very good showings from him. So we'll see what he can do here going up against the Diamondbacks. Obviously, probably the scariest team you can face as a pitcher. He hasn't faced them yet this year, so going to be a new experience for him. The Padres' bullpen has been much better down the stretch. A 3.37 bullpen ERA, absolutely nothing to turn your nose up at. And the offense has been finding a way. They haven't been putting up huge numbers, so maybe a little bit concerning, but eighth in the majors and run scored and first in batting average this year. This is not an offense that you want to be looking past. So we'll see what they can do against the Diamondbacks who come into this game fresh off of snapping a three game losing streak with an eight to two win over the Giants. The Diamondbacks really, really got to be winning these games here. They're giving the ball to Merrill Kelly, who's five and oh this year with a 3.71 ERA. He got removed from his game on Saturday against the Brewers with a right calf cramp. But as long as it was just a cramp, I don't think we need to be too worried. And the dude was absolutely dealing out there against the Brewers. Five innings, two hits, no runs allowed, no walks, and six strikeouts. So just a little cramp. He'll come back. He should be absolutely fine to make this start here, you know, five days later. Or maybe it's going to be six days later. But regardless, feeling very good about Merrill Kelly on the mound. Feeling very questionable about that Arizona bullpen. A 4.41 bullpen ERA is obviously not great. What we're not questioning is this offense. They're coming off a game. They scored eight runs. Eight, zero, three, nine, five, and seven runs over their last few games. Seems like that little hiccups out of their, uh, out of their you know, system. First and run scored this year first and on base percentage and second in both batting average and slugging percentage this is an elite offense so looking at the numbers for this game guys we got the Padres at plus 110 the Diamondbacks at minus 125 we got an over under of nine out there the Padres are 45 and 31 on the road so a very good road team but Arizona is 43 and 35 at home no slouches there at home we've got mixed trends towards the over under with the Padres kind of shockingly being an under team on the road and Arizona being an over team at home but with a number of nine I would probably lean a little bit towards the under but guys I do like the Diamondbacks at minus 125 in this game I don't like what I've seen from Martin Perez this season I think Merrill Kelly is going to go out there and throw an absolute gem. And I mean, while going up against a team like the Padres can be a bit tough, I think he's going to be absolutely fine out there. So give me the Diamondbacks in this one. Definitely has a shot to end up in the pinned comment. Next up, guys, we've got the Oakland A's going on the road to take on the Seattle Mariners. The A's just played their last game at the Coliseum. So that's pretty dark stuff there for that franchise and that situation. Going to be a bit rough. The, uh, yeah, the A's, they're going to be giving the ball to J.P. Sears in this game. He's 11-12 and 12 this season with a 4.43 ERA. He just got shelled by the Yankees. Didn't have a good time in the start before that against the White Sox, so not exactly somebody we feel great about. He actually got shelled by Seattle back on the 4th, so he's been having a pretty rough time. The Oakland bullpen has been very good down the stretch, and neither has their offense. So really running out of positives here to find for this Oakland team. Definitely going to be a big, big emotional letdown, you know, after that whole deal with the last game at the Coliseum. So I'm expecting very, very bad stuff from them. And this one, as they go up against the Mariners, who also have to be pretty depressed, guys. They won their last game against Houston 8-1, to but they are uh, they're now officially eliminated from playoff contention, which, yeah, has to be a really, really tough pill to swallow after building a nice lead in their division uh, early in the season. So, yeah, rough stuff there. We don't have a confirmed starter for them in this game. If it ends up being some random young guy or their bullpen, you know, cobbling together a start for this one, a 3.67 bullpen ERA for Seattle this season. Definitely makes me feel good, and I don't see any reason their hitting is going to get any worse. It hasn't been very good this season. One of the worst offenses in the 
the majors, but they should be able to muster up something here for the you know the last couple games of the year, especially going against a pitcher they destroyed only a few days ago. So looking at the numbers for this one, Oakland a pretty bad road team, Seattle a very good home team. We've got both teams showing trends towards the under. Unfortunately, we have no numbers for this game yet, guys. I'm just going to say that I'm leaning pretty hard towards Seattle in this one, and you'll have to check back on that pinned comment to see, you know, once we get a confirmed starter for Seattle, and once we get some numbers, I'll probably be putting this one in the pinned comment. But like I said, check back and make sure. Last but not least, guys, we've got the St. Louis Cardinals going on the road to take on the San Francisco Giants. The Cardinals just won two out of three at Colorado, but it's a little bit too little, a little bit too late for a Cardinals team that's been eliminated for quite a few days here. They're giving the ball to Miles Michaelis. One of the reasons they had a rough season, he went 9-11 and with a 5.35 ERA. His last couple of starts have been better, a good start against Cleveland and a good start against Toronto, so we'll see what he's got left in the tank here going up against the Giants, but not a starter that I'm going to have a ton of confidence in. And the last time he faced the Giants, he didn't have have a great time so worried about him but not worried about this Cardinals bullpen they've been very good down the stretch a 3.68 bullpen ERA is obviously nice and the offense has looked better down the stretch which is a little bit ironic since that's what really sunk this team uh eight five seven two and six runs over the last few games they're 23rd in the majors and run scored though and 21st in slugging percentage so yeah not a team that I'm super excited about as a uh, you know lifelong kind of at least Cardinals fan it's been a bit rough to see the direction this franchise has taken over the last few seasons so We'll see what happens in the offseason to them. And they're going up against the Giants in this game who uh, come into this one. They've played a bit better down the stretch, too, after being eliminated. They're giving the ball to Landon Roop, I think is how you say his name. And, yeah, his last three outings have all been starts, and they've all been very, very good. So he should be excited to go up against a Cardinals team that is not the hardest hitting. In terms of their bullpen, the Giants haven't been great. Roop has been one of their better bullpen guys. And, yeah, that leaves a little bit of room for concern. But the offense has been better down the stretch. 2-11-6, two, 2-9 two, runs over their last few. This is a team that can hit the ball a little bit. 17th in run scored, 17th in slugging percentage. So looking at the numbers for this game, we've got the Cardinals at plus 105. We've got the Giants at minus 115. We've got an over-under of 7.5. The Cardinals, not a good road team. The Giants, a decent home team. We've got both teams showing trends towards the under, but I'm not too interested in that, guys. I'm much more interested in just taking the Giants to win this one straight up at minus 115. The Cardinals, like I was saying, not a team that really impresses me, and I think we can pretty much, uh, you know, think that Michael is not going to have the best time out there against the Giants. So give me San Francisco in this one. I think it's a good spot for them. That's all the games we have for today, guys. Hit that like button for good luck on all of your bets and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know in the comments any questions you have on today's slate. Thanks for watching. You can click the link in the description to check out stumpthespread.com and we'll see you guys tomorrow for more sports betting action.